Hey, I'm Rich Ward, and you're watching Underkill TV. It's true. Welcome to Underkill TV at Hard Rock Hell. I'm joined by a man who needs absolutely no introduction whatsoever. The one, the only Mr. Rich Ward. Rich, how are you doing? Man, I'm so glad to be back with you, my friend. It's always great to see you. I saw you earlier. We chatted. It's, uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to have you back here. Pleasure to see Fozzie again playing Wales. I think the last time was Cardiff, wasn't it? Yeah, it's it's we we usually uh, only play Cardiff and Swansea just because of our booking agents don't see fit to put us all over Wales. But this is um, for us a treat to be able to play a bigger festival here, and uh, you know have a chance to play in front of more people who maybe haven't had a chance to see us yet. I was going to say, what do you think of the the idea of this festival? Like everybody sort of on camp, sort of a, a hard rock heavy metal boot camp sort of thing. Yeah, it seems more like Hard Rock Heaven than Hard Rock Hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> hell, yeah. usually you think of bad things, yeah. yeah, but this seems to be like a good thing, you know? So I think I'm retitling it today because Rich Ward doesn't want to play Hard Rock Hell. Rich Ward wants to play Hard Rock Heaven, and here we are. <laughs> and you guys have got a really good slot time as well. You, I yeah. think you're, you're one of the main headlining act times, aren't you? Yeah, it's us, then Soil, um, and then Buck Cherry. So, yeah, I think we're perfect. We're like... Um, we're right after the salad and right before the main course. They're like the appetizer. It's perfect. Yeah. Everyone loves the appetizer because it's always very tasty, you know, and you don't get sick from it. And Fozzy as well are out promoting a new album. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's called Sin and Bones. It's, uh, it's the third of kind of post-covers band era uh, record from, from us. And uh, everybody wave. There's Chris. Hello. Hello. I, I, and uh, okay, you got it. Sorry about that. Uh, it, it was my singer. Uh, yeah, but it's our, like I said, it's our our third post covers era record, and uh, it's it's a great record for us because you know the singer Fozzie is Chris Jericho, the 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 WWE champion wrestler, and for us. Um, he, he spent so much time wrestling, and I've had my other bands, that it's it's taken us a little longer. Uh, you know, when you're a young band, you get in a van and you travel around the, the world, you know, 10 months out of the year. Well, we've been a bit of a part-time band yeah. for, for years, and so... For us, we, we're maturing like a fine wine. You know what I mean? Like, you know how processed foods put together really quickly? Well, we just we just slowly built this band and have spent our time uh, really working on our chemistry. And Chris and I, as a songwriting team, we really worked hard to, to kind of uh, get the, the best out of each, each other and uh, as uh, writers and players and singers. And this... This record really kind of represents the best of who we are, uh, and it's a uh, it's really great timing for us because Chris is now uh, kind of semi-retired from wrestling and putting uh, almost all of his time into music, and it's a perfect time for us to come out with this album, and uh, we've had some really successful touring behind it, and so I know it's a long answer, but it's exciting times for us, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, some people have gone on record as saying that this album is the best uh, album Fozzie have ever done. And, uh, I mean, you can hear the, the, the reviews from the single sandpaper as well, how, how, how positive they are. How would you describe it from Chasing the Grail, Rich? What would you say? Is it a step in a different direction? To No, I think it's a, a kind of a gradual evolution from right. that record. Yeah. It's a, It still has kind of the big melodic, uh, you know, uh, qualities that Chasing the Grail had, except for we kind of expanded even more so, adding uh, production-wise more harmony vocals, and a lot of that comes down to the addition of uh, Paul DeLeo, the new bass player in the band. He's a great singer, so we were able to start to really build on the vocal strengths of the band. Instead of it just being Chris and myself singing live, now we've got Chris and I and Paul, so we're singing three-part harmonies and really stacking big vocals. Um, and also, because Stuck Mojo, my other band, is not an active band right now, there's always been a, a tendency for me to try to write for Fozzie, right, for Stuck Mojo, right, yeah, keep yeah, yeah. the sound uh, separated. And because myself and Frank Fonsere, the drummer of, of Fozzie, basically built Stuck Mojo in the 90s, uh, we decided that because Stuck Mojo's not active right now, we would just not worry about making a uh, uh, making a record that sounds 
like what we we think Fozzie's supposed to sound like. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. just we, we let it be organic. There were no let's throw this idea out because it sounds more like Stuck Mojo or let's not it's not let's just write a record. Chris Jericho wrote all the lyrics. Rich Ward writes 99% of the riffs, and what comes out of that is a the natural who we are as a band. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whereas on Chasing the Grail, I think because because Stuck Mojo was still active, if I came up with a mid-tempo groovy riff, I had a tendency to maybe say, no, that sounds more like Stuck Mojo. Let's maybe not use it. Does that make sense yeah, to you? Yeah. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah. I know exactly what yeah. you mean. Uh, and obviously going back to tonight as well, playing tonight, uh, how many songs off um, your new album are you going to be playing? I think we're playing five. five. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, I think because we're so excited about the, the album. And then the other part about it as well is that, uh, you know, we're playing a 55-minute set tonight. And it still allows us to play a lot of songs off the other records. I think uh, the Chase and the Grail, we have four songs off that record. So it's not like the other records aren't represented. It's just that we have a new album. We really want to showcase that one and, and still bring two and three or four songs from the other records in. And we're playing a song from every album. Excellent. Yeah. One thing I was going to ask about that as well, uh, it seems there was one song on Chasing the Grail that seems to be the ultimate song for a festival. Uh, I don't know if you can guess which one I'm talking about, where it's got the perfect crowd participation in it. Oh, God pounds his nails. Yeah. Are you guys doing that? Oh, of course, of course, yeah. If you have a song that goes, the chorus goes, hey, 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 one, two, three, it has to be played, yes. Pounds. yes. I mean, another thing I was going to ask, what was it like playing Download and doing that at Download this year? Yeah, well, when I looked at the poster and it said Metallica and Black Sabbath, Soundgarden and Fozzie, I thought, well, I've gone to heaven. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, for me, just the anticipation of the gig was, was amazing. But the show was great. We, we, we played really well. We had a great time. The sound was excellent. It, you know, sometimes festivals, things are a bit out of your control because you're in, a, um, you're in an environment where... Okay, when the band is through before you, hurry, 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 get them off. Hurry, 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 get on. And and it's almost like at an auction. You know, like everything's so quick. And sometimes it can be unsettling because it takes, uh, you have so little time to prepare and make sure that everything is right. You know, monitors and the sound, you know, just everything. And uh, I think that's the benefit of, of, of being someone who's, my first European tour was in 96. Uh, the first time I played in uh, in Wales was in 1996. And so I think once you've had an opportunity to do things for a number of years, you start to be able to relax. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, um, the same way that I hate to bring it back to this, but music and sex are so <laughs> similar. <laughs> you know, once you become comfortable with your wife or your girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's the nervousness is gone, you know what I mean? And I think being being a veteran player helps give us an advantage, yeah, yeah. especially when the front man of the band, even though all of us in the band have been playing and touring for, for, you know, for years, you think about our front man has been playing in front of arenas every night, you know, and on television in front of seven million people every week. And I think he's just at ease up there as well. And I think that's why I think why Fozzie thrives in an environment like Download and Hard Rock Heaven, as we'll call it. Um, because um, we just have been in these positions so many times. You know what I mean? Um, in you, in, and life is about learning from those experiences. That's how you get good at something. You know what I mean? If, if you... Everyone makes mistakes, and what you try to do in life is is uh, make sure that you don't repeat them. You know what I mean? And you learn to and you learn from them. One thing I meant to ask as well, obviously, you said in Stuck Mojo are on a bit of a break at the moment now. Um, would there be plans to perhaps do something sometime in the future? Never say never. Never say never. Yeah, uh, the band is not. Uh, it's just on hiatus. I, I'll never say I'll never do anything with the band. But right now we've got such a good thing going with Fozzie. It just seems silly, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and I'll tell you one of the reasons people say, well, why can't you do both? Well, the reason I can't do both is because in both bands, I'm the primary songwriter, the the producer, um, and kind of the the in Fozzy, Chris and I are the are the kind of the partners. Yeah. Yeah. But in Stuck Mojo right now, it's it's kind of me as the 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 kind of guy who makes you know I'm not the boss but you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm yeah um, yeah and and the problem is is that um, 
I could I could be the guitar player in a second band where I don't have to run it, but it's difficult to actually run two bands where you're doing everything because then your your focus is split and you're not able to you're not able to to make sure that it's 100% great what you're doing because then you, you you know like it's yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah yeah, of yeah. and uh, so for it, you know for me I want to I want I want Fozzie to be as good as it can be and and I feel like if I'm currently trying to do things on the side with Stuck Mojo it would be very difficult to maintain the quality of what I've got going here Absolutely. Would that be the same sort of answer then for up to any chance of a possible follow-up to you? My Kung Fu is Good? Well, see, that's different because in that band, that's not a touring active no, thing. It's, 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 it's a project. Yeah. yeah, and I could do that, and I want to. I really yes. want to do another one of those records, just like I, I'm desirous to do another Stuck Mojo record. Um, but for me, uh, it would be easier to do a follow-up to the My Kung Fu record is because I could work on a song at a time. Yeah. You know, instead of it treating it like an album project, that could actually do it, you really just start to songwrite and work on it. If any of the viewers that are watching this um, have not checked out Rich's solo album, please check it out because it is probably one of my favourite albums of all time and the most, the most underrated album I think I've ever heard. Uh, so please check it out. Where can they check out all that stuff then, Rich? Have you got your own sort of... Your Twitter or your, your, your yeah, Facebook? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Rich Ward, the Duke, Facebook, um, you know, Twitter. Uh, um, uh, I, I, you can go to uh, thedukeofmetal.com as me. Um, or you could just... Uh, you, you could give out your personal phone number and then you could talk to each and every person about it and just give your personal testimony. I think it's probably a good way to go about it. <laughs> you're, you're a good spokesman. Thank you. Well, Richard, thank you very much for your time and really appreciate the fact that you've, you've taken the time to come and talk to us at Underkill TV. I love you guys, Underkill TV. And tell me what's going on new for you going on now. Uh, I've got a little daughter now. Uh, she's four, four months old. <laughs> that, that is amazing, yeah. I see her on your phone every time the phone lights up, so that's pretty cool, man. Congratulations. All right, brother. Love you. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Thanks a lot for your time. You got it. Thunderkill TV, signing out from Hard Rock Hell with Rich Ward from Fozzie. Take care. Peace. Peace.